Hello everyone, welcome, I'm Valmore. Today is going to be the next step of me bringing you my tier list of my opinion of the recipes from Heroes Feast. I'll go over it quick again, if this is your first time here. An S tier is a recipe that I think you absolutely have to try. An A tier is a recipe that I think you should probably try. A B tier is a recipe, maybe it needs a little work. C tier is a recipe that needs quite a bit of work. And a D is a recipe that... I just didn't think it was very good. And again, these are my opinions. You may find something that I didn't like as much was your favorite. Also, I highly recommend that you take any of these recipes and change them up to add your own preferences to them. Someone mentioned on the last video that they love their hand pies with apples in it. That sounds amazing. So change up the recipes, make it how you'd like. And without further ado, this is the Elven tier list from Heroes Feast. Let's get started. Up first is the Keith Paw. Little apricot and coconut bites. So they were good. It was an interesting combination, something that I don't think I've had before. I think something that really could have helped with this is toasting the coconut a bit, because that brings out some of the oils and just adds a nice little extra flavor to what you're doing. Otherwise, I think they made very nice little snacks. Coming up next is the Feywild eggs which is a frittata with fresh herbs and cheese in it. I'm going to give this one a B because the recipe itself gives you a bunch of options for which herbs you'd like to use, which cheese you'd like to use. And again, that's good. You can choose your preferences and you can again go with something a little more to your taste like a dill and basil instead of something like I did with a mint and tarragon. But I think if they had gone with a stronger direction, I probably still would have been a B. The fact that they didn't give you any direct ingredients, I'm just going to leave it as a B. It was good, but otherwise it's just a nice baked scrambled egg dish. Next up is high harvest puree, which is just roasted squash and garlic and then pureed together. It was a tasty dish and very simple. In fact, too simple. I think that's why I'm going to give it a B. Just the simplicity of it doesn't really elevate it to something that I think you absolutely have to try. And next on the list is elven bread. So this is just a cinnamon swirl bread, but I think it was very good. It wasn't very sweet. It wasn't a dessert bread. It was really a bread that you could have with certain dinners, but I absolutely enjoyed it as a breakfast bread. I think it was an A and one that I think you should try. And I've joked about how I'm not good at baking, but breads I can generally do. Breads are more straightforward. It's the things where I need to do specific shapes of something that I tend to have problems. Now up next is the Wood Elf Forest Salad. Honestly, I'm going to give this an A. It's a close one. It could be a B. With the vinaigrette that you make and, and the shaved Brussels sprouts, it is a very nice combination of sweet, tart, and bitter. It goes well together, and absolutely, I think it should be on your menu. Up next is Elven Maruth, which is a vegetarian style hand pie that the elves make. And like the hand pie from the previous, I think I'm going to go with B. Um, and it's not just for the pie crust this time. Uh, the filling was good on this as well, but the recipe tried to make them into even smaller. Two bite turnovers is what they refer to them as. But I just had a few issues with the size of them and the filling inside, specifically the potatoes that probably should have been cut into something smaller or even smashed up a little bit because they just kept trying to poke through the pie crust and just made for an annoying fold. Again, this might just be me having issues with something like pie crust, but I think I'm going to leave them right there. Up next is going to be the drow mushroom steak. I'm going to go with an A on that one. They're portobello mushrooms marinated in balsamic vinegar. Now, I kind of counted it against earlier on the puree for it being too simple, but I think in this case, the simplicity really elevated the dish. The balsamic is really a great flavor with these mushrooms that are then seared on a hot pan or grill. And I've said before, I love mushrooms. So with this one, I think it is an A, and I think if you like mushrooms, you'll enjoy. Next up is going to be the cherry bread. And it's probably going to get a lot of opinions, but I really enjoyed it. So I think I'm going to put it in the A tier. I really think you should try it. It is a fruit cake. It is dried fruit and nuts in a cake batter. 
And like I said, I know there's going to be a lot of strong opinions. Some people, the idea of a fruitcake really turns them off, especially here in the United States. It's sometimes seen as a bit of a joke food, it, be, it weighing like a brick and it lasting forever. But I think this really elevates it to a level that is very good. And if more fruitcakes were like this, people probably wouldn't have as big of problems. So I do. I think you should give it a try, especially if you've never had a fruitcake or if the idea of a fruitcake scares you. Next up are green spear bundles and bacon. Bacon wrapped asparagus. As delicious as these were, there was nothing to them. The asparagus was only lightly dressed in olive oil and salt, and the bacon was just bacon. Now, the whole thing was delicious and a very simple dish that is easy to make and always going to be a hit. But I think they could have done more just doing something like dressing the asparagus a little bit more, even even with a little bit of Parmesan cheese. An interesting combination might be the orc bacon from a couple of chapters from now wrapped around the asparagus. I think that would that would change the dynamic as it is though. I think it's a B. It's good and absolutely needs a little bit something to elevate it. Up next is Moonshe Seafood Rice, which is a seafood risotto. I want to give this an S because it was delicious, but there were definitely some changes I would make to this. One of those being I think you would do well to sear the scallops. Sal scallops are so amazing when they're seared and this recipe just has you throw them into the rice i think it was a missed opportunity to really pop the dish up other than that it is delicious it is wonderful you should make this and like i said sear the scallops otherwise risotto is delicious it can be tedious to make but it turns out so good and it is worth the effort that you put in coming up next is dragon salmon which is a salmon filet with a red wine and shallot sauce. Like the previous fish dish, this is a wonderfully cooked piece of salmon. I enjoyed it. And I think I'm going to give it an A. It is a fantastic dish. I would recommend making it. And, and the red wine sauce on it was delicious. And I do love just a plainly seasoned piece of salmon with a nice crispy skin. But it was one of those things that a little bit of extra onto the salmon would have made it an S. Maybe do something a little different than salt, you know, maybe like a smoked salt or a little bit of extra seasonings like some dill, and this would have been a can't miss dish. Up next is the Kuala Nesti vegetable stew, which is some sliced zucchini, squash, and eggplant simmered in tomato sauce, also known as a ratatouille. It was absolutely amazing. It was so good. Everything was so tender, so flavorful. This one, absolutely, you have to make. It may not give you flashbacks to your childhood, like from the movie, but I think you'll enjoy it. And now the final recipe from the Elven section of Heroes Feast is Meal's End, which is a fresh fruit yogurt. It was delicious. The yogurt and the heavy cream mixed together for a wonderful texture. The fresh fruit is so good with it. And then there's the weird crunchy element from the meringues. They're they're hard to describe how they are. They're they're a little crunchy, but then they just kind of melt in your mouth. And they're a little sweet and and you know the fruit's a little sweet. Otherwise, you know, Greek yogurt not very sweet. So it had a nice balance of sweetness. It was interesting. I did really enjoy it. And that is it for the Elven section. The recipes were all a bit on the above average side. Only one or two that really wowed me. Some of it was very simple. And some of it definitely needed a little bit extra to it. But overall, I really enjoyed this. And thanks for watching. You can follow me on Instagram or Twitter at Chef underscore Valmore. The links will be in the description below. Like, subscribe. Come back Monday for my video from another nerdy cookbook, and then come on back next week for another tier list video.